Mr. Mayor, I want to ask you something. Yes, ma'am. Uh, we have two phone lines that are conjacent to each other. They're both departments using it. One is the health department line and the dog catcher's line, okay? Mm -hmm. I called. The first number was disconnected. They, they don't even have it anymore. It's not using. The second time I called, they said, please call your city. So I called the police department. Okay. They hooked me up to the dog catcher. He came out. All right. He told me to call if you see it again, because he had other. I called back and a fax machine came on. Okay. Now the problem I have, I I, I love our city. Believe yes. me, I just love it. But if I'm out there trying to shovel some snow, and this dog comes by, that shows that snow's not gonna get shoveled. Okay. <laughs> That's my problem. I hear you. And if I don't get it out the way, the snow plow is coming back, and push what I had just shoveled up in there. Okay. You know, can we? Can they get a number? Okay. Can you we send an independent number, number uh, independent for the number. animal control yes. department? Yes. Okay. For dogs, see, everybody don't love dogs. Yes. And dogs don't love me. And especially okay. dogs without license. And Although this uh, dog had a license and he acted like uh, he owned the neighborhood. I hear you. You understand? Hear so you. this is all. This is all I'm saying. You know. Mm -hmm. I, I I hear you loud and clear. So, um, is Carla here? Has Carla made it here yet? No. Okay. Usually we have Carla, but we have it caught on tape, uh, your question. And I will see why that number is not going direct. I will see. I would just like to know about our garbage. You okay. Know, I'm a fisherman, and in the summertime, the garbage men come once a week, and sometimes they don't come at all. Mm -hmm. And then you got maggots and everything out there. What are we going to do about getting our garbage picked up more often? Mm hmm well, sir, um, I can tell you that um, we've went to private, public, and is a line blurred in between. Um, since I became mayor, we, we got an ordinance in there saying that we will go and try to capture maybe 75% of that market of picking up the garbage. Um, we've, we've lost control of that since it's been split into private, public. So I don't know if the area that you're speaking of if we traditionally pick it up or someone else but the one thing i can tell you is that um one time a week will be the norm because of fiscal um restraints that's being put on us those days of picking it up twice a week i just don't see them coming back again no time soon uh, just to be blunt and brutally honest with you but the one thing i i, I do know is that um, areas where we get um, trash more frequently, they tend to go back around and pick up again. So without knowing the exact area that you speak of, I don't know if it's privately being picked up or if it's publicly being picked up. The city picks it up. Okay, so then I, did, I will tell you that when if it's a, a, a problem of the trash overflowing, then you can simply, on that directory we've got, you can simply call in, and then, Monty, she can simply um, address this issue for you now, why in Marktown maybe uh, we don't have the adequate pickup that you're sensing. Um, let me let the person that's over that department speak. Sir, what's the area that you're talking about? Riley, oh, Riley Road? Yeah, as Mayor stated, we do pick up once a week there, and what, like, on what occasions? At all in the entire week. Now that's something that I'm going to have to address. But when that happens, I would like for you to please call the office 391-8464, and I will handle that personally. I'll be here after the meeting, and I will give you a card. Thank you. Okay, we'll follow the mic. Good evening, Mr. Mayor. Good evening. Uh, Joy Sticks, Robertson Child Development Center here in East Chicago, daycare okay. center, been here for 60-some years. Yes. Um, is it too soon to ask about economic development? Uh, it's never too soon, uh, but I would tell you that um, right now I find myself carefully, patiently, 
without being in a heated rush, looking over the financial condition of the city, uh, I can tell you uh, we are in dire straits right now. Uh, I can tell you that my focus have been on that. Um, some feel that I should step on the accelerator and move a little faster, but I haven't lost sight of that if you move too fast sometime, you miss what's along in the peripheral, and that happens to be someone's job. So I've been proceeding with caution. So right now, when you look at economic development, uh, we cannot have that until we have stabilization. So right now, I'm looking over the whole financial situation. That's what, what I'm keyed in on. But we do have an economic uh, development department that's always in a constant state of doing that. We have a city planner that's in a constant state of, of projecting into the future. So it's not like we've come to a standstill. But uh, my priorities have been uh, focusing on this $15.5 million monster that I got to wrestle. And, and you're right, if I get a moment to exhale, then we will project into the future. But you can't look into the future until you know what the present is. And, and, and that's the state of limbo that I've been in so far since since I've been your mayor. So will economic development uh, ease that tension? Yes, because economic development means prosperity. Prosperity means additional revenue, and additional revenue means more money, and then that monster can go down. So I, I would tell you that um, is it too soon? It's never too soon to think about help coming on the way or the Calvary coming. But for right now, I, I like this. I'm just focusing on that. So uh, when you start seeing me talk about new projects, this and that and that, then, then you can say, oh, I think Copeland got a handle on this thing. So for right now, maybe I should just say, yeah, you're right. Maybe just a little too early. I wanted to find out that if you were still going to go ahead and uh, be on channel, I mean, uh, are you going to still come back to us uh, throughout the year? or mm -hmm. And are you going to be on, uh, what is that, uh, radio station? Yes. Um, on the radio, WJOB, they gave us two slots uh, to be on monthly. Uh, I've chose to be on there one time uh, a month. And then the other will be various department heads going on. So now we're getting a rounded view of what goes on in the city. Uh, it allows us to feature each department. Uh, people can freely call in and fill that question. Uh, maybe in the comfort of their home, they may want to ask that department head something just like, here in the comfort of your community, you may want to ask them something direct. So I've made a commitment uh, to go on the radio once a month. Um, you can see from Channel 21, uh, we've opened it up that every meeting uh, that's held, we're trying to film them so that the community is almost like um, um, like when you look at TV and they have the radio shut in or TV shut in and somebody can't make it to church, but they can turn the radio on. They can turn to the channel and, and, and still interact. Well, we're saying that when the people can't come to the meeting, then the meeting should come to the people. And this is why you're seeing on Channel 21, you're being inundated with almost every meeting that goes on. Uh, we owe that to the people. Uh, we say that if you operate in the atmosphere of darkness, only a fool believes that he can keep the people in the darkness forever. I'm not from that school. Uh, I've always uh, practiced what I preach as a councilman, saying that that information should be accessible. I came up as a community activist going in, asking for this information, fighting over it, and now under my watch or when I'm at the helm, then I'm supposed to send us back to the dark ages? I don't think so. Uh, so showing this on channel 21 is part of empowering community uh letting them see how these boards operate um since becoming mayor I've, I've appointed a few boards but i tell people i don't appoint people and then tell them to blindly go and do what i want them to do once you appoint someone then they should have sovereignty to step up and represent the people just like you were elected to represent the people so and this is part of why the meetings are being filmed and the people can see. You know, I, I remember the, the, the being councilmen and the people would come up and they would watch the council meeting. And, and when we went to go vote, it was a running joke. They would sit up there and vote for us before we can vote. We don't need to go back down that avenue where, where, where it becomes so obvious 
that allegiances are formed blindly or monetarily to where the people can see through our nakedness and see that we're not committed to them, we're committed to someone else. I'm not, I'm not going back down those dark alleyways. And this is why we've chosen to go on the radio, fill whatever question. And it's a funny thing. When you go on that radio, you don't know what question coming. And because it's live. And the same thing, uh, showing the meetings on Channel 21 so the people can see for themselves. Can I say something? Yes. Okay. Um, during with recreation, um, we have dwindled down to a skeleton crew from 21 to nine recreation workers, and and we're out here trying to hustle and bustle and do the best we can with the children. I know that some people said that they wanted to volunteer here, but when you volunteer with the centers, we are very protective of our children. So you have to come into the office over there by Washington Park, fill out volunteer papers, then we will take them to the police department, and we have a background check on you because we're very cautious on who comes in and deals with the children. So if you have any questions about recreation or anything else, you can call me, 391-8476, and we'll answer all your questions, and we're always willing to come back to the centers and, and work with the community. In, in regards to us being taken over by the state, with every benchmark they put forward, with having 95% attendance for the faculty and the principal, we've done that. With improving the graduation rate, I can say without reservations, and you hope this is recorded, you will see at least 70% of our kids graduate from Central this year getting their diploma. <laughs> Last year it was only 51%. Our goal, the state said 55. We said we can do 70 because we got a great group of kids here, and we're on plan for that. With standards-based instruction, we will have our kids graduate going into the industry that's all around, whether it may be the meal, with certification to do so. So we're moving them forward, but I need your help. We need your help. If you see our kids walk in the street, you need to call me at school and tell me where you see them walking. That's the biggest issue that we have. Now, as always with Mayor Copeland, I always like to take questions. If you have any concerns, I'm willing to, to address them. Yes, sir. If that's 70%, that's where we run into a problem. I'm not going to pass the problems on to someone else. We can just say that there's been a problem in the past with having five principals in four years that has created a problem. We're looking at kids who entered this year with us and graduating at the end of this year in June of how many graduate. We've got 280. We want to have at least 70% out of that group graduate with no waivers involved at all. And we can do that. Last year it went down because, I'll be honest with you, leadership drives a building. And we had kids who were having classes that they shouldn't have been in, and they missed out on graduating by one and two credits. Well, we've addressed that by going through every kid's transcript and making sure that they have all the credits that they need. We met with the seniors today, and we told them, if they are failing English language arts, and they, all of them have to pass that four years in a row, if they're failing as of Friday when the semester ends, then if they're on a basketball team and they're failing, guess what they're off of? The basketball team. If they're in the choir singing, I love to hear them sing the gospel music, guess what they won't be doing for a semester? They'll be in after school tutoring as required by me to be there. So you'll see our graduation growth because we're looking at from the state standpoint, from what we had this year who started and ended with us years this year now the state looks at different ways look at what came in your freshman year and what goes out your senior year. and i have a respectful disagreement with how they do that 